Okay, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to try to decode a, a rather difficult topic, and this is the regulation of, really, of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis through a very special molecule. And this molecule looks like this. It's called this molecule. Let's see, so this is, this is the six position. Let's see, so this molecule is called fructose 2 6 bisphosphate. So this is fructose 2 6 bisphosphate. Come on. This is fructose 2 6 bisphosphate. And I want to be perfectly clear. This is, well, it, it might be obvious, but this is not. This is not the same thing as fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. So in other words, phosphofructokinase 1 will not bind, or excuse me, aldolase, excuse me, aldolase will not bind this molecule. Remember, aldolase normally binds fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. Uh, aldolase will not bind this. This molecule actually is an allosteric activator and inhibitor. Well, let's talk about what it normally activates. Okay, this molecule normally it activates it activates phosphofructokinase one. So this molecule activates phosphofructokinase one. Okay, and the way it does it is by binding to a fructose two six bisphosphate allosteric site on PFK one. Right, it binds to um, the allosteric site on there, and it also decreases the allosteric affinity for PFK's allosteric inhibitors, right? So, so normally on PFK, so normally on PFK, so if, if this is PFK, right? This is P, and specifically PFK1. I want to be very clear that it's PFK1 because we're going to talk about a PFK2. PFK1 has, um, let's say, it has, you know, some allosteric sites, right? It has allosteric sites on it. And specifically, the allosteric inhibitors are ATP and citrate. So I'll draw them in red so you know they're inhibitors. So, so ATP is an allosteric inhibitor of PFK, and so is citrate. So is citrate. And what, P, what fructose 2,6-bisphosphate does is it activates glycolysis, or in other words, it activates PFK. Well, how does it do that? Well, number one, Number one, um, let's, let, let, let me uh, actually let me denote this as X. I'm just going to denote it like this, just so I can save room. But let's say fructose 26 bisphosphate binds in the allosteric side on PFK1. Number one, it, it, it by itself it, it allosterically activates PFK1, so that's good, right? But also what it does is it it essentially it decreases the allosteric affinity for the inhibitor. So it's sort of, you could think of it as it sort of repels the allosteric inhibitors. So in other words, the allosteric sites um, for the allosteric inhibitors on PFK1 become less, uh, have, a, have a smaller affinity for them. So it, effect, it effectively acts as an allosteric inhibitor blocker. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, Okay, what it's doing is it's activating PFK1, and therefore it's activating glycolysis. Okay, but what you also have to understand is if PFK, or excuse me, if fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate was not present, PFK1 is shut off. So in order for PFK1 to function, you pretty much have to have fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate. In fact, what you would find is if you removed fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, what would happen is PFK would PFK1 would shut down, right? I have to be careful to say the one. PFK1 would shut down. So if you don't have any fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, you're favoring gluconeogenesis. So in the presence of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, that favors PFK1 and therefore glycolysis. If you if you if you don't have any fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, you favor the the inactivation of PFK1 and therefore um, gluconeogenesis. So in other words, for PFK1 to function, it has to have fructose 2,6-bisphosphate bound in its allosteric site. So it is a very, very potent allosteric activator. Okay. Now what well, now what we can do is we can we can come over here and we can talk about cyclic AMP's effect. Right. So what ends up happening is. Um, 
a large part of the regulation of glycolysis versus gluconeogenesis is, is hormonal. And specifically, it's, it's, um, it's done, that, 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 that regulation is done in two ways. Number one, it's done, and let me actually get some more space over here. So one of the regulations is by glucagon, okay? And, when glu and glucagon has a specific uh, G protein coupled mechanism, and specifically when glucagon binds to its receptor on a cell, it increases the concentration of cyclic AMP, right? So the concentration of cyclic AMP increases with the binding of glucagon to its receptor, right? Now, one thing I want to say, and let me, let me do it like this. The enzyme that synthesizes fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, right, that's this over here, the enzyme that synthesizes it is a bifunctional enzyme. And this is the first time we're seeing something like this. But it's, 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 it's essentially, it's a bifunctional enzyme, and here's what it means. So this enzyme is divided ultimately into two parts, okay? And of course, this is very abstractly. It doesn't look like this. One side is phosphofructokinase 2, and PFK2, this is why I made sure to say PFK1 in the other case, PFK2, uh, let me come down here. Essentially what PFK2 does, so PFK2 is it takes fructose 6-phosphate and converts it into fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, right? So PFK2, instead of phosphorylating at the 1 position, it does so at the 2 position. So PFK2 is ultimately what is, um, what is um, making uh, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, fructose right? The other part of the bifunctional enzyme is the enzyme that essentially reverses that reaction. It's fructose-bisphosphate, fructose or fructose-bisphosphatase, okay? So it, it's, a, it's a strange enzyme complex, but essentially one side of it makes fructose-2,6-bisphosphate. The other destroys it, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially draw the same thing down here, and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to draw the same thing right here. So just give me that. So fructose bisphosphatase, and then out here is phosphofructokinase 2. If it helps you remember it, PFK1 phosphorylates at the 1 position. PFK2 phosphorylates at the 2 position, so maybe that'll help. Okay, so glucagon raises the concentration of cyclic AMP. Well, it turns out what cyclic AMP does, and you know this from biosignaling, right? Cyclic AMP ultimately, right, cyclic AMP, um, what it's going to do is it's going to cause activation of a protein kinase. And specifically, it's a cyclic AMP-dependent protein kinase. And it, it goes in the direction that I've shown. And what it does, essentially, is it phosphorylates this complex. It phosphorylates this complex, okay? Now, one thing you have to understand is that when this whole complex is phosphorylated, it favors the fructose bisphosphatase. It, it favors the fructose bisphosphatase. So this guy gets active. It favors the fructose bisphosphatase. And actually, let me go ahead and, and make this perfectly clear. It's fructose bisphosphatase 2. I want to be perfectly clear about that. It's a different fructose bisphosphatase than the gluconeogenic enzyme. Okay, just like PFK2 is different than PFK1. Okay, but when, anyways, when, when, when cyclic AMP rises, it, it, it activates a protein kinase. So I'll put this as a protein kinase. And when the protein kinase gets activated, it phosphorylates this enzyme. And when it's phosphorylated, it favors the fructose bisphosphatase. And so when it's, oops, when it's not phosphorylated, when it's simply a hydroxyl group, this favors the PFK2 activity. This favors the PFK2 activity, right? The PFK2. So ultimately when it's phosphorylated, it's going to be hydrolyzing or, or destroying fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. But when it's not phosphorylated, it's going to be favoring the synthesis of PFK2, or excuse me, the synthesis of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. See, it gets kind of confusing sometimes. Anyways, 
But there it turns out there's another hormonal regulation. There's another level of hormonal regulation, and this one is instead by insulin. And recall that insulin and glucagon are antagonists of each other. They are antagonists of each other, and the enzyme that insulin essentially activates is called phosphoprotein phosphatase. So this enzyme has a special name. It's phospho phosphoprotein phosphatase, phosphoprotein phosphatase, and insulin stimulates this enzyme. And essentially what this enzyme does is, I'll do this in a bright blue color, it takes water, right, and it hydrolyzes off this phosphate that was right there, okay? It hydrolyzes off the phosphate, and so it basically re it gets rid of the phosphate and causes the activation of the phosphofructokinase 2 part of the enzyme, right? So the key, the key with this regulation is this. When phosphorylated, it favors the fructose bisphosphatase 2 activity. When it's not phosphorylated, it favors the phosphofructokinase 2 activity. So what does this ultimately mean? Well, if you think about it, when fructose bisphosphatase 2, when fructose bisphosphatase 2 is activated, right, there's going to be, there's going to be, there's going to be decreased levels of what? There's going to be decreased levels of, and I remember I abbreviated it as an X, there's going to be decreased levels of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. And so if there's decreased levels of this molecule, then it can't bind to the allosteric sites on PFK1, and so then glycolysis stops. So basically in the presence of, or in the activity of fructose bisphosphatase 2, glycolysis is inhibited and gluconeogenesis is stimulated. And that's of course in the low levels or in the low le in the, 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 the in the hydrolysis or the destruction or the low levels of fructose 2,6 bisphosphate. However, and I'll come back up here, whenever um, this complex, whenever this enzyme is not phosphorylated, in other words, when phosphoprotein phosphatase has been activated, the PFK2 activity is, 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 uh, is dominant. And so you have high levels. You have high levels of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. And then when there's high levels, it, it can bind. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate can bind to PFK1. And when it does so, it activates PFK1. And so you get stimulation of glycolysis and inhibition of gluconeogenesis, right? Inhibition of gluconeogenesis. So what this tells us is that the ultimate control of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis is controlled by the relative amounts of insulin and glucagon. So knowing this, why don't we look, why don't we, we, we take a, a legitimate real world example. Okay, so we've, already, we, we've always mentioned energy charge and things like that, right? So let, let's think about if I just eat, ate a meal, right? Let's think about I just ate a meal, right? I just ate a meal, and of course this is in the moments just following the meal, right? If I just ate a meal, I'm going to get lots of sugar, right? Well, assuming I eat like a fries or you know something like that, I'm going to get lots of sugar, and so that sugar is going to be absorbed into your blood, and it's going to end up in the cell, and it's going to end up in there ultimately because of insulin. Insulin is going to bind to its insulin receptor, and this opens the GLUT4 channel, and glucose comes into the cell, right? Well, if you've got initially lots of glucose in the cell, right, you have to burn it initially. So, so you want to turn PFK1 on, right? So if, I, if, if insulin is present, that's going to cause glucose to come into the cell, and I'm going to have to get rid of the glucose somehow, right? So essentially, insulin is going to cause activation of phosphoprotein phosphatase, which activates PFK2. And of course, that causes the synthesis and increase in concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, right? And so when that increases, that stimulates glycolysis and inhibits gluconeogenesis. Because if I've got lots of glucose present, I need to ultimately convert it to acetyl-CoA, and that's aided by phosphofructokinase 1. Likewise, if I've been fasting for a while, right? If I've been fasting, that's going to stimulate gluconeogenesis, right? Because 
maybe my blood sugar is low at that time, so I want to get glucose into the blood, right? So glucagon in, is released and binds to receptors and increases the concentration of cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP then comes and it activates protein kinase, and the protein kinase phosphorylates this enzyme complex, or this bifunctional enzyme, and this causes, or it favors the activation of fructose bisphosphatase 2. So now you've destroyed, right, you've destroyed fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, and this inhibits glycolysis and stimulates gluconeogenesis. And this, this sort of regulation goes in a cycle. And I guess the key thing to understand with this cycle is that if you, if you have fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, it's going to activate PFK, and it's a very potent allosteric activator, right? It's going to activate PFK, and it does so by binding to an allosteric site, right? It does so by binding to an allosteric site. And so I guess that the, the big takeaway from this video is that the ultimate control of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis is levied through hormones. And specifically, if you really want to get specific, by the pancreas. So I hope this video helped clear up anything on regulation of these pathways. Um, in later videos, what we'll do is we'll go over the pentose phosphate pathway, which is also a carbohydrate pathway. See you in the next video.